Hello PR7 lovers, this is a quick little film to explain how I upgraded my PR7 lights. Okay, so it's a great bike, we all know that. Go and watch all my films, I'll tell you how good it is and what's not wrong with it to be honest. Um, but there's plenty more if you want to see it. Uh, this film is all about the lighting, so um, one of the the issues with the PR7 is, well actually, it's not such an issue. The lights are perfectly adequate. Um, my other bike is a, a KTM Enduro bike and the lights on that are frankly absolutely appalling. So anything that's better than that bike uh, is a complete bonus. Um, riding that bike in the dark, you might as well just have a candle. Um, anyway, the PR7 has like a, a, a double light up front. Um, it's a very kind of striking part of the design, the headlight unit and the whole, um, the whole thing. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's perfectly fine, get you past your MOT and all the rest of it, and you can ride in the dark in it. Um, if you were doing some proper trail riding, I don't think that it would give you enough light to be safe, to be honest. If you were doing some technical stuff, I think you'd want some more light. Um, there's a really elegant solution, I think it's by ET Solutions, ET Industries, um, that uh, swaps out one of the OEM lights with an LED version that kind of slots in there and it's a plug and play 10 minute job away you go. Um, it's about I think 400 euros um, and if I had the spare cash I would probably get that because I think it keeps the look of the bike really clean um, but I don't uh, so I didn't get it. Uh, one of the other issues with it is um, or with any upgrade of your lights is is retaining in the UK at least um, what you need to stay legal for your MOT um, and the MOT actually uh, if a light is too bright it's it won't pass its MOT um, so that was in my mind when I did my light upgrade so I have got a series of um, I've got two uh, Vision X Solstice, I think they're called Solstice lights that are mounted to my KTM 450 EXE. Now that 450 is going through a bit of a transformation. Um, it's, it was transformed into an adventure bike and now it's kind of on its way back to becoming a bit of a hipster bike. I have another film about that, you can go watch that. Um, that means that the lights are free. Um, so I've taken those lights off that and I've mounted them onto my PR7. And it took me quite a while to do, but I'm really happy with the solution that I came up with. Um, it wasn't complicated. Um, you just gotta kind of take your time and think about the wiring, think about how you want it to go. Um, there are two elements to it. There's the actual wiring element and then there's the mounting the lights onto the um, bike part. So I'll talk about that bit first. So um, I, the, one, of the, one of the challenges is like where do you mount this onto? So I've seen other people that have got the, um, the crash bars on the front of the bike. I think Long Riding Zone has got those uh, over on Instagram. And if you've got them, then it's actually quite a, a good mounting point to put extra auxiliary lights on. But I don't. I quite like keeping the front end of my bike quite slim if I can. Um, so I was looking at the bike, where would these mount? And I realized that there's, there's a little triangular gap um, next to where the indicators are. Um, that's all part of the, the front fairing unit, um, the headlight unit. Um, and that these lights would fit perfectly in there. So in order to do that, I created a bracket. Now, if I was more of an engineer and had um, so sort of metalworking tools and a metalworking workshop. I could have probably done that with one piece of metal, um, but I don't. So in the end, I kind of had two strips of metal that had holes drilled in them, and I used that to create a kind of an L bracket, which was mounted at the top and bottom, um, and that allowed me to position um, the mounting point for the light exactly where I wanted it. Um, I actually sprayed them black, so it kind of blends in with the bike um, but they're just um, I think they're called fixing plates or something like that from screw fix I just had a load of them in the drawer so it was just an easy job to kind of 
adapt what was there. I just had to kind of drill out um, one of the holes to make it a little bit wider. Um, but once they're in place, they're not going anywhere. And that allowed me to position the lights perfectly. So I was really happy with that. Um, one of the lights is uh, like a main beam and one of them is a wide beam. Um, and I keep, uh, I've got to remember this. So I keep the wide beam next on the road side. So in the UK, that's on the left side of the bike and that's kind of going to light up the verge as it were. And then my spot beam is pointing forwards and I kind of make sure that it's, it's pointed left as opposed to right because right would dazzle oncoming cars. Um, so yeah, so, so that mounted up pretty quick and easy. Um, the next, next part of that is how you actually wire it in. So the way that I chose to wire it in was to wire it into the main beam of my bike so that when I turn the bike on, by default, the dipped beam um, comes on. And I don't actually think you can turn that light off on this bike. <clears throat> but whenever I'm riding, day or night, the dip beam is on. Um, and these lights don't affect that at all. And the way I've wired it is so that the when I put the main beam on, then the main beam comes on on the bike as normal, but it also um, turns on these auxiliary lights. So really, I'm getting very, very bright main beam. One of the key things there, referring back to the MOT issue, is that if I'm not riding trails, um, I can very easily unplug these lights. Um, they're just kind of plug and play. There's um, some very kind of durable um, weatherproof kind of plugs um, that are right next to the actual light themselves. So if I don't need these, I can just unplug them and then they're just decoration um, and they're not being used. Um, one of the other ways that I could have wired it in was to actually why they're made on a completely separate switch. So they're completely independent from the front lights that are on the bike um, as standard. Um, but I chose not to do that. I did it this other way. Um, so I'm not, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit tricky. I have to kind of draw you a diagram to show you exactly how I wired it in. But essentially I took um, a feed from the main beam. I took the headlight mask off and I took a feed from the main beam and uh, pulled that out and created uh, uh, and diverted it so that when the power goes to the main beam, it also powers up these LEDs and it works pretty well. So it makes a considerable difference to the OEM um, standard lighting. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this helpful. If you've got any comments, let me know. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe. Um, there's plenty more about the AJP PR7 um, on my YouTube channel. Thank you. See you again soon.